All right, everybody. This is uh, lesson number 11. And once again, this is uh, sixth grade math. Eureka math. Engage NY. Uh, module 2, lesson 11. Okay, so let's get going with lesson number 11. Um, so lesson 11 is fraction multiplication um, and the products uh, of decimals. Okay, so before I begin, let me go over a couple things. All right, so first of all, uh, you know, from the previous lessons, we learned that, you know, there's, there's a couple of ways you can do a multiplication, right? You have your traditional arithmetic method, uh, which we covered at the beginning of last lesson. Uh, we also talked about the um, distribu the distributed property. And then remember that the distributed property, right? The tree mutative property says that when you have a number, right, and then you multiply it by, say, B plus C, then you can distribute the A um, into the B, so A times B plus, and then distribute it into the C, A times C. Um, it also works the other way around, right? So if you have a number, A times B plus A times C, then you can distribute out the A. The A is the common number. So you'll distribute out the A, and then you multiply it times B plus A. Now, this is the distributive property, right? Now, we also talked about uh, using uh, the or place value chart so we, to help us, uh, you know, uh, multiply using fractions. So, for example, we remember that when we have, you know, uh, we have a decimal point and then we have numbers to the right. Say this is one, two, three, right? And then to the left, say this is one, two, three. Well, we know that this is in the ones, right? This is in the tens. This is in the hundreds, right? Uh, but then the first number to the right of the decimal point is in the tenths, th, right? So this would be 1 over 10, or we can also say 0 0.1. So that's important, okay? So keep that in mind. We make a line here. The next one would be in the hundreds. So hundreds, th, and this is 1 over 100, or 0 0.01. Okay, we're right there. And then the next one is 1 over 1,000, or 0 0.001. And this is in the thousands. Okay, so don't forget the th there. Okay, so now that we have that in mind, let's go ahead and continue with our lesson. So uh, for the exploratory challenge, question A says, calculate the product of 30, 34.62 times 12.8. Well, we're going to go ahead and use our chart here. That's what we're going to use. And understand that this one, 34.62, has uh, two numbers to the right of the decimal point. 12.8 has one number to the right of the decimal point. So therefore, 34, 34, we can rewrite 34, and then 62 hundreds, right? Because it falls in the hundreds there's two numbers to the decimal point, okay? So it's in the hundreds. Then we'll multiply times 12 and then 8 over 10. 8 over 10 because, once again, there's only one number to the decimal, to the right of the decimal point, so that falls in the tens, okay? So now that I have them this way, now I can just simply convert them into proper fractions, right? To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the 100 times the 34, so multiply, and then once you get your answer, then you add your numerator, add your numerator, and I'm going to do that with both, right, so multiply, and then add, so multiply, and then add, okay, so let's start with the first one, I'm going to multiply 100, 100 times 34, now we know that we can ignore this two zeros for now and just multiply 1 times 34, 1 times 34, that gives us 34. Now I'm going to bring back my two zeros, and that's going to give us 3,400. Now I'm going to add my numerator, that's 62. And therefore, I'm going to have 3,000, 
462 over 100. I keep my numerator. Times. Okay, let's look at the next one. 10 times 12. Once again, I'm going to ignore my zero there. And I'm going to multiply 1 times 12. 1 times 12 will give me 12. I add back the zero. That's 120. I add my numerator. That's 128. So 128 over 10 equals 2. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 100 times 10. And that's going to give me 1,000. Okay. Now, the last part right here is I got to multiply my 3,462 times 128. Okay. So I'm going to use a calculator really fast to do that calculation. Okay. So let's go use this. So now we have um, 3,462 times 128 okay so there is uh, my my answer there okay so then what i'm gonna do then is i'm gonna go back uh to the app so i'm gonna go back to the app and then we said that it was 4 3 and then 1 3 6 so there it is okay now because notice that my denominator is a 1,000. Okay, so notice that. Notice my denominator is a 1,000. Because my denominator is a 1,000, it falls right over here, right? It falls in the third row right there on the 1 over 1,000. So if you've noticed, I have one number to the decimal point, two numbers to the decimal point, three numbers to the decimal point. Therefore, my answer must also have three numbers um, to the right of the decimal point. So my answer is going to be four, four, three, one, three, six, and then my decimal point's right there because I must have three numbers to the right of the decimal point because it is a base of 1,000, and that's where I fall right there. Okay, so that's the um, exploratory challenge number one. Okay, so um, B. Xavier earns $11.50 per hour working at the nearby grocery store. Last week, Xavier worked for 13.5 hours. So how much money did Xavier earn last week? Remember to round the near, uh, to the nearest penny. Now, first, we know that Xavier is earning $11.50 an hour. And he worked for 13.5 hours. So they're asking us how much money did he earn last week. Well, this is a multiplication problem, so we're going to multiply 11.50 an hour times 13.5 hours. And that's going to tell us uh, what was the amount that Xavier earned uh, from work. Okay, so once again, we're going to use our knowledge of fractions. But remember, we're going to try to keep fractions that have a base of 10, a base of 100, base of 1,000. Okay, and we're going to keep it like that. If it's, if it's one, over, 1 over 10, this is 0 0.1. 1 over 100 is 0 0.01. And then 1 over 1,000 is 0 0.001. Okay, now if, if we look at the 11.50, we can tell that it, this is 11 and 50 over 100, right? But we can simplify that because uh, the 100 can be reduced, the 100 can be reduced um, into a 10, and then the 50 into a 5, right? Because at the end of the day, 50 over 100 is 1 half. But remember, technically we could say it's 11 and 1 half, but we're trying to see if we can keep it on base 10, base 100, on base 1,000. Now, technically this is already base 100, but it will make our lives a little bit easier if we can reduce it. In this case, we can, because we can say this is just 11 and then 5 over 10. We're just eliminating uh, one set of zeros times. Now, the 13.5, we can say this is 13 and 5 out of 10, right? 5 out of 10, once again, because it falls right there. Okay, this is my decimal point. Remember, I'm just looking at my place value chart, right? So, again, this is a decimal. This is to the right of my decimal point on a value on a place value chart okay now that i have them like this then i have to convert them into proper fractions right 
So then what do I do? When well, I multiply um, 10 times 11 and 10 times 11, remember, let's ignore the, the, the zero for now. 1 times 11 is 11 plus, and then you add the zero, that's 110. So 110, and then you add my numerator, that's 115. Okay, so remember, multiply, add, multiply, add. So it's 115, and then we'll leave the base 10. Now we'll look at the next one. 10 times 13. Once again, let's ignore the zero for now. 1, 1 times 13 is 13. Add the zero, that makes 130. Plus 5, that's 135. And then we'll leave the base 10. Okay, so remember, multiply and then add. Okay, so it's going to be 10 times 13, 130, plus 5. That makes it 135, and we'll leave the base. Okay, now that we have them like this, we would just multiply across. Okay, we multiply across. So we do 10 times 10, and then 115 times 135. So 10 times 10 is going to give us 100. And then we're going to do 115 times 135, okay? So we're going to do 115 times 135, and what do we get? Okay, so we get um, 15,525, okay? So we get 15,525. That's our answer there. Now, obviously, this is a fraction, right? It's 15,525 over 100. So in order for us to get the final answer, we understand that this 100, it's base 1 over 100, and that will make it 0 0.01, meaning there's two numbers to the right of the decimal point. So then my answer is going to be 155.25. Okay, why? Again, because there's two numbers to the right of the decimal point because it's base 100, base 100. So then my final answer would be, there must also be two numbers to the right of the decimal point, okay? So we can say that Xavier is going to earn um, $155.25 by working 13.5 hours last week. Okay, so uh, as far as the discussion, we just have to keep in mind here, remember the place value chart. Okay, so remember the place value chart. Um, so we have a set of numbers as my decimal point, right? If I have a set of numbers, say I have, you know, a one, a three, a five, six, and then to the left I have, a, you know, a two, a three, a six. Notice that my two is on my ones, the 30 is on my tens, the 600, it's on my hundreds, right? That's to the left of my decimal point. But to the right of my decimal point, right, the one is in the tens. And that tells you that this is 1 over 10. The 3 is on the hundreds. So this is 3 over 100. The 5 is in the thousands. So this is 5 over 1,000. And then finally, the 6 is in the 10,000. So this will be 6 over 10,000. And how do we write it as a decimal? Well, this is 0 0.1. This is 0 0.01. This is 0 0.005. Um, this was a 3, not a 1. 0 0.003. Uh, then 0 0.005. And finally, the last one is 0 0.0006. And they match the number of places they are to the right of the decimal point. So, for example, there's only one place here, so 0 0.1. Two places in the 3, so 0 0.03. Uh, three places to the five, so 0 0.05. Six places in the six, so 0 0.006. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. Uh, so we can write this. This is in the tens, hundreds, thousands. Okay, don't forget the th. And then uh, ten thousands. Okay. So let's just keep it like that. Keep those notes in mind. So then to the right, that's what you get. Okay. This is a place value. This is a reminder of the place value chart. Okay. So let's go over the exercises. So the exercises, uh, number one, calculate the product of 324.56 times 54.82. 
So the first thing to recognize is that both of those numbers uh, have two numbers to the right of the decimal point, right? 0 0.56, 0 0.82. So this tells you that both of those are going to be in the hundreds place, right? So then you have 324 and 56 over 100 times 54 and then 82 over 100. So we convert them into, we convert those into proper fractions. And we do that by multiplying 100 times 324 and then add your numerator. So once again, multiply, add. Okay, so what do we do? So first, let's ignore these two zeros for a second. 100 times 124 times 324 is 324. You add the two zeros, that will give you 32,410. And then you add the 56, so that will give you uh, 32,456. So this would be 32,456 over 100 times. We look at the second one. 1 times 54 is 54, plus 2 is 5,400, plus 82, 5,482. So 5,482 over 100. Now we just multiply across 100 times 100, and then the numerator, 32,456 times 5,484. Okay, so 100, and by the way, this um, 4 here should be um, a 2. Okay, so 100 times 100, 1 times 1 would give me 1, right? And that was going to be the, my, my denominator, so that will give me 1. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. So 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros, I put my comma there, so that's 10,000. Okay, so now I have to multiply. 32,456 times 5,482. So let's do that multiplication. Okay, so when we do that multiplication, 32,456 times 5,482, then I get a huge number. So let's go ahead and paste this huge number back into our lesson. Okay, so in our lesson, so then the multiplication is going to give us 1, 7, um, seven, nine, two, three, seven, nine, two. There we are. Now, here's the thing. Notice that this one falls in the 10,000th place. That's in the 10,000th place. That tells you that there's four numbers to the right of the decimal point. Four numbers. Therefore, your final answer must also have four numbers to the right of the decimal point. So then you're going to write your final answer as 1, 7, 7, 9, 2, 3, 7, 9, 2. And then you have to have four numbers to the right. So we're going to place our decimal number right there. And then we're going to count 1, 2, 3, put a comma right there. And this is your final answer. Okay. All right. So let's go to the next um, problem. Problem number two. So it says, Kevin Kevin spends $11.25 on lunch every week during the school year. If there are 35.5 weeks during the school year, how much does Kevin spend on lunch over the entire school year? Remember to round the, uh, to the nearest penny. So we know that he's spending $11.25 on lunch every week times... 35.5 weeks. That's what he's doing, right? So if we're going to use our knowledge, what we know from our place value chart, so then we're going to place 11 and 25 out of 100, right? Because that's in the hundreds place, times 35 and 5 out of 10, right? Because that's in the tenths place. So then we're going to multiply, right? 1 times 11, 11 plus 2. Uh, 1 times 11 is 11, and then you add back the two zeros. I'll give you um, 1, 1, 0, 0. So that's 1,100. But then don't forget to add that 25. So that's going to be 1,125 over 100. Okay? Times. Same thing. 10 times 35. 1 times 35 is 35. Add the zero. That's 350. 
plus 5, that will give you 355 over 10. Now we just multiply, multiply, okay? When we multiply these numbers, uh, the easiest way to multiply, once again, is just literally just ignore the zeros, all the zeros, and then just multiply 1 times 1, and then just add up all the zeros. So once again, 1 times 1 is 1, and then I have 1, 2, three zeros so one two three zero so that's one thousand now we know that we have a base one thousand now we got to multiply um one thousand one hundred twenty five times three hundred and fifty five okay so eleven twenty five times three fifty five so eleven twenty five times three fifty five and what do we get um we get that number so it's let's actually place that number here because we're gonna that's our numerator for the for the problem Okay, so then our numerator is uh, 3, 9, 9, 3, 9, 9, uh, 3, 7, 5. Okay, so 3, 9, 9, 3, 7, 5. So then let's keep in mind, though, that uh, our final answer, if you've noticed, this is a base 1,000. So there's three zeros, meaning there's it's going to be base 1,000. If we look at our chart here, base 1,000. So there's three numbers to the right. Okay, so three numbers to the right because it's the base 1,000. So then when we write our final answer, we're going to say 399375. And then we're going to place um, the, the decimal point, making sure that there's three numbers to the right. So our final answer is $399. 0.375 okay so this can be rounded to about let's say 399 dollars and about 38 cents we're going to round it up and this is our final answer okay and that's uh, so we can say that uh, kevin uh, spends uh, about 399 dollars and 38 cents in um lunch on lunch uh, during the year during the year we box this answer okay so let's move on to the next um, question number three says uh, gunners car gets 22.4 miles per gallon um and his gas tank can hold 17.84 gallons of gas how many miles can gunner travel if he uses all of the gas in the tanks. Well, we have 22.4 miles per gallon, and his tank can hold 17.4 gallons. So then we're gonna have to multiply 22.4 miles per gallon times the amount that his uh, tank can hold. So that's 17.82. So 22.4, we know that there's one number to the right of the decimal, so that's 1 over 10. That's in the tenths. So this is going to be 22 and 4 out of 10 times 17. And this is two numbers to the right of the decimal point. So this is going to be 82 over 100. So in the hundreds place. So now once again, we multiply 1 times 20. 2 is 22 plus 1 is 220 plus... 4, that gives us 224 over 10 times. So once again, we multiply 1 times 17 is 17. At the two zeros, that gives you 1,000. Uh, that gives you uh, 1,700. 1,700, and then you add the, the, the 82. And that gives you 1,782. And that's over 100. So now we just multiply. We multiply. So once again, multiply the ones. 1 times one is one and then you add the zeros you have one two three zeros so it's one and three zeros so once again we have a base of one thousand telling you that your answer is going to have three numbers to the right of the decimal point so now we're going to multiply 224 times 1782 and that is going to give us three nine nine one six eight However, remember that because this is on the uh, this is on the um, hundreds place, so that our answer is going to be three nine nine one six eight, and there must be three numbers 
to the right of the decimal point. So I'm going to place it right there. And so my final answer then is going to be uh, 399.168. And so we can say that um, Gunner can drive. Um, he can drive 399.168 miles uh, on an um, entire, say entire uh, tank of gas, tank of gas, and then we box this. This is the answer that we're looking for. Okay, so that was number three. Let's go ahead and do number four. So, number four, the question says, the principal of East High School wants to buy a new cover for the sand pit in the long jump competition. He measured the sand pit and found that the length is 29.2 feet and the width is 9.8 feet. What will the area of the new cover be? Okay, so first of all, we know that to find the area, we got to multiply the base times height. Okay, base, sometimes it's called the length. So in this case, um, the length, it's right here. It's 29.2 feet. So 29.2 times um, the width, which is right there. And sometimes instead of using um, height, sometimes we're going to be using uh, width. Okay, so it just, the, the, the naming, it's going to vary depending on the problem and then the situation. Okay, so, and so then the width in this case is going to be 9.8. So once again, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say this is 29 and 2 out of 10 times. This is 9 and 8 out of 10. They are both in my tenths place, right? So 0 0.2. In my tenths place, there's only one number to the right. 0.8 in my tenths place, there's only one number to the right. So now I multiply. Okay, so then I'm going to say 2 times, 10 times 29 is 290 plus 2 is going to be 292 over 10. Times, 1 times 9 is 9. Add the 0 gives you 90. Add the 8 gives you 98 over 10. Okay, this is equal to multiply 10 times 10. That's going to give you 100. And then we're going to multiply 292 times 98. So we're going to multiply 292 times 98. And that's going to give us, wait, 292 times 98. That's going to give us 5,256. Okay, so then that's going to give us 5,200 and... 26. Okay, so let me go back um, really fast and do this math correctly. So let's go back to that. Let's make sure that we multiply uh, 292 times 98. Okay, so let's make sure that we do that. Um, we can see here 292 times 98. Okay, and that's going to give us the correct answer. So that's 28,616. Okay, so that was 28,616. 28, All right, so then uh, now let's remember then that we have a base of 100. Therefore, there must be uh, two uh, numbers to the right of my decimal point in my final answer. So it's 28616, but there must be two numbers to the right. So that makes it 286.16, all right? So there's my final answer. And so we can say then that uh, the cover, I remember, let's not forget this. So the cover um, should um, have an area of, then that in this case is 286. 0.16, and these are squared feet. Okay, let's not forget the units of measurement, and that's uh, squared feet. Okay, and this is going to be my final answer. 
All right, so that looks like that's it for this lesson. You got the problem set. If you have any question, questions, questions below, and then uh, I'll see you in the next lesson. If you find some value, give it a thumbs up. All right, see ya. Adios.